when I met the Little Rock Nine in 1958 for the first time. That, that would be an aha moment for them. Um, these are nine youngsters who mostly volunteered with the backing of their parents to go into the first desegregation moment in Little Rock, Arkansas, where the school board decided that the desegregation would begin in the high schools, and Central High was the first of those schools. Um, it was connected to the NAACP suit for the desegregation of schools in Los Angeles, I mean in, in uh, Little Rock. But when I met them in the living room, Daisy Bates's living room on after school, they, I asked them how they were prepared to do this. And at this time, they were already engaged in a fierce battle. Uh, students had been, white students had been recruited by the White Citizens Council to drive them out. And the White Citizens Council was very active, the KKK was very active, and they were getting all kinds of harassment, physical, verbal, and whatnot. And when I asked them in the first minutes of our gathering, um, what would you told when you <laughs> agreed to do this? Their response was, we were told not to not to fight back. And I listened to them saying this, and I was fundamentally outraged personally that you send young people into a, a situation such as they had never known before and their parents had never imagined, and tell them not to fight back. So I gently explained to them that that was the best way for them to talk to you, the NAACP orientation people, but I said what they actually mean is that you fight back but not imitate the enemies who are trying to drive you out of the school. And then I explained to them that that was the meaning of the Montgomery bus boycott, that it ended maybe a year before. And I could see on their faces a, a sort of waking up. <laughs> the difference between fighting back but not acting like what they are doing to you and not fighting back that you can resist, I went on to say, you can fight back with your minds, with your wit, with your courage, uh, and that fight will be more effective than if you swung your fist at them. And uh, um, Ernest Green and Minnie Brown have said that I saved their lives with that first session because they were terribly contorted <laughs> in the admonition, um, you must not fight back. And I, freed, I helped them to free themselves up, to fight back deliberately, but to do other weapons. And we went, that same evening, we went into a workshop, I asked them, what is the worst thing that happens to you in the school? And one of the girls, I think it was Melba Patilla, who spoke up very quickly, the worst thing that happens is bombing. And I asked him what that was. <clears throat> and a, a boy usually would take a marble or a stone and wrap it in a piece of paper or a piece of, uh, of uh, foil and would then bomb them throw it at them, hit them. And uh, she said that this really hurts a great bit. So I used that, uh, her illustration of what was the worst thing that she experienced as a kind of a brainstorming process 
raising with them the question then, all right, you get bombed. What can you do about it? And uh, there are a number of different suggestions from each one and, and all. But the important thing about that was uh, that a few days later when I returned to Little Rock, and for a number of weeks I was there every week almost, um, m the same girl, Melva, said how she walked into an English class, and as she walked into that class, a bomb went whizzing by her ear and hit the wall, fell to the floor, and missed her. And she said she was trembling, but she thought to herself, what can I do? And she said she went over to the wall, uh, to the floor where the bomb had dropped. She picked it up, and then she went back in the room, or rather she went towards the back of the room, the boy who had thrown it, and she smiled at him as she placed it on his desk. And she said that he turned a number of different colors. She smiled at him. And that one or two of the people around, students around, saw that and they laughed nervously. But she said that the next English class, the next day, that boy greeted her at the door and said, Good morning, Melba. And he never again was found harassing any of the nine youngsters or any of the white students who were being supportive. His name was taken off the list of the, because they, they kept a running list of the harassers and folk who caused trouble, and his name was taken off that list. <laughs>